Hi everyone, welcome to Kunda 7, a place where we explore our interiors to elevate our hands, live comfortably. Today we are talking about designing an African interior design style and African royal palaces. It may seem a bit elementary, but we are going to look at some of the basics of African interior design style. And as I have discussed before, that Africa is rather big. You can't just put it in one bracket, but mainly I'm talking about some of the elements that really connect the African interiors. The practice of interior design harkens back to the ancient African royal palaces. African civilization had started long way back before colonization and it might have not been documented. Sure, yeah, but it's still alive today. It resides in the hearts of African people. So to really design an African aesthetic, you have to understand, you have to know all the elements that were picked from these African royal palaces, which is why today we are looking at these royal palaces, how they have really impacted the whole interior design style of an African. I'm gonna go ahead and discuss some of the examples I would use would be from sub sahara to show you that actually there were some ancient palaces also in these areas though people don't want to talk about them so before we dive in into the interiors the interior design style I just wanted to really dive in into the architectural features and show you how ancient African palaces have really impacted our architecture today anyways let's look at the Queen's Palace in Zimbabwe. This Queen's Palace, which is ruins of today, of course, it was a work of art. 17 feet thick. It's one of the places that you just look at and you're like, wow, this was amazing. Built in a stone without mortar or without cement. This is one place that really has stood a test of time. Of course, right now it's ruins, but this was amazing. This ancient royal palace has really influenced some of the recent buildings today if you look at the international mugabe airport building was really influenced by this ancient royal palace and this is seen throughout the modern africa that we see today today you're gonna see that there was still use of stone in african architecture of course right now they use cement they use mortar and they never use cement in this which took a lot of labor i do think but, uh, of course today uh, we are looking at things that are weather resistant. The reason why you can't find so many buildings standing in Africa is because Africans' mindset was set to preserve the environment. So definitely there was so much influence from the ancient African loyal palaces into the Africa that we see today. Furniture. To design an African aesthetic, you have to understand what kind of materials that are actually used in African interiors. So African interiors your design style is inspired by nature, utilizes natural shapes, textures, and finishes. So much of African furniture is made from ebony, mahogany, or cinderhood, or sometimes rotten, which are all natural materials. And of course, we don't really have so much history on that simply because they are natural materials and I don't think they stand a test of time. If you're going for an African aesthetic, you're going to look for natural materials, the use of mahogany, and also these materials could be patterned with Akita fabric or Kubakro laser upholstery and also of course chair seats and bags could also be raided from grass which is probably why right now we don't have really ancient runes with chairs that existed back then because these are all natural materials that can really vanish that can really perish vanish oh my god natural materials are normally perishable they don't stand years and years in existence. Artwork and accessories. I think this is where the ancient Africans went overboard. My God, these people used to decorate graves with pottery. I think I'm going to take you to the kingdom of Kema. They still have some runes existing today. Uh, you see like in this place here, they would decorate pottery, uh, which is something actually I'm glad that we left behind. I don't know why anyone would want to bury someone with decorative activities. The same here. In Europe, I don't understand why people go to the grave to talk to the dead. It's something creepy for me. Anyways, uh, there is so much that uh, 
ancient Africans used to do. They used to decorate with cord, they used to decorate with pottery. If you go to a museum, you find some of the pottery that was got from the Kama Kingdom, which is known as the Kingdom of Kush, which is current day Sudan. Pottery is always abundant in all archaeological sites because it doesn't decay and it survived in all environments and climates. Pottery found in Sudan gave us information about the Neolithic groups who lived in Sudan at that time, um, Bronze Age groups and uh, Iron Age groups. Uh, we know a lot of deal about the clay they use, the techniques they use, the styles, the decoration. Uh, it tells us about the complexity of the ceramics. You see this amazing pottery, which is still existing today because pottery doesn't decay. These are some of the things that are carried on from generation to generation. My grandmom used to be a potter. And of course, accents also include hand-weaving baskets, which I've shared here with the Andeva, carved wooden bowls, which are really sweet and amazing. I have some of them here, stone and facts. And then we have the ritual mass. I don't know why I think mostly people think that when you say African interiors, mostly people are directed to only ritual masks. I don't think if you want an African aesthetic, you should be actually forced to go on masks only. You can just choose these other elements that don't include masks. All in all, the palaces were decorated with basic furnishings enhanced by animal skins, graphic biological and spiritual mirrors, sculptures, uh, painted ants, ornate gold, ornaments found in tombs actually that even today people would go dig up the tombs to so that they can find some gold. Archaeologists all over the world are really moving into Africa, truly going into Egypt digging up people from grades and uh, actually I think it's insulting. Anyways, African patterns, a major form of expression and personal endowment, a medium of communication. People say Africans didn't have a language system but Africans used to communicate through patterns and this is why they're very very important and I think I find it interesting that people have copied these patterns, they have no idea what they mean. This world we live in today, it's uh, interesting. It's just like I grew up knowing that Romeo and Juliet was original work of Shakespeare but it turns out that actually it wasn't his original work like he adopted it from someone else in Italy. Patterns are some of the things you can really employ in your space to have African aesthetic. They were used as uh, these exquisite textiles give wearers and admirers insight into social, religious and political African context in an abstract and approachable way. Surprising enough, these were also adopted from ancient royal palaces. Now, I want you to take a look at this Zimbabwe wall. You can really identify this pattern, which is also used actually also in, uh, in our designs day. You'll see this everywhere if you're really attentive. Some of these patterns were really gotten from way back from really ancient times. So it's really amazing how ancient Africa impacted the day-to-day -day Africa that you see. Flowers. Flowers today mostly they're really sandstone or concrete, mostly because of the climate. Then you will see uh, ute rugs used. So often a uh, mats. I think I'll get a picture you guys to show you some of the mats that are really designed with names with different patterns and uh, sometimes you will see system mats and the flowers so it really depends for before in the ancient times it was uh, i think it was untreated surfaces it was amazing i do think it was amazing because the mentality of africans before it was preserve the environment it wasn't a capitalism mindset whereby you're supposed to own some match on things you don't use. What was important was being a peace of mind and living in a community with people and now that's what the world pushed. Everyone is hoping on it and now the world is crying like, oh my god, we are killing the environment. But this is what the agenda you push. So now here it is. So we're gonna enjoy it all together, I guess. <laughs> the color parrots. The color parrot I think I've talked about this before. When it comes to colors, I think it will really depend. Just like like I said, Africa is rather big. These different places they have different characters that really impact how they do their interiors. When you go to Morocco, when you go to South Africa, West Africa, uh, Rwanda, different people, different places. 
colors, but I think mostly they are home colors, terracotta, burnt orange, deep brown earth tones with textured soft paint, cream or white painted holes. Designing and styling. So overall, when you're designing an African aesthetic, mostly what you have to keep in mind that in ancient times, these people used to keep their deco very minimalistic. Lace was more, things they were just minimalistic in nature. So if you want really to have that cohesiveness into your space, don't overpile your space with masks or anything, just be minimal and I guess you'll be able to achieve a very cohesive place. So I think, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. I guess I would really appreciate it if you subscribe and leave me a comment. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye-bye.